Welcome to a country in political crisis. In some countries that means bombs and bullets, but not in Belgium. Europe's superpowers have battled in this country for centuries, so Belgians have no taste for that. This is the town of Stavlo, home to French-speaking Walloons. Julianne Thomas, her mother Joanna and her father Jarno are part of something their town has been doing for more than a thousand years. <laughs> Back in the 7th century, the town's monks were banned from taking part in this festival. So they disguised themselves in costumes like these and delighted in mocking the local nobility. Weapons, though, are not for the squeamish. They're inflated pig's bladders. Je crois que ceux qui veulent vraiment séparer la flotte de Wallonie ne viennent pas ici et je pense pas qu'ils ont compris grand chose à la Belgique. Ce qui est dommage, c'est qu'on parle seulement de quelques personnes qui veulent séparer la Belgique, mais on parle pas des milliers de personnes qui, eux, veulent garder la Belgique unie. The parade can't hide the fact that this is one of Western Europe's poorest regions. Unemployment here is double what it is in the Flemish North, and the public sector here soaks up twice as much of the federal budget. This region now needs a nation more than ever. This is the rich cultural history of the people who for a long time ran this country. Even though they're now far more likely to be poor and unemployed, they still know how to, how to have a really good time. And for some reason they love hitting people on the head with a pig's bladder. Now they can't even see what I'm doing. So much for the French-speaking half of the country. Now let's venture into the Flemish North. That's the Dutch-speaking region which some would like to be the independent nation of Flanders. In the town of St Nicholas, they know how to enjoy themselves. As the nation's politicians try to find a power-sharing formula, they'll have to factor in the views of people like Peter Beisroger of the Flemish separatist party, the NVA. Wallonië en Vlaanderen op twee snelheden leven. Het zijn twee totaal verschillende landen. Eigenlijk zijn het landen, het zijn wel deelstaten, maar het zijn twee verschillende landen met twee, twee verschillende culturen. Do you see any point to Belgium itself? I mean, do you have a Belgian identity? Uh, personally? <laughs> Persoonlijk? Nee. For centuries, the Flemish were ruled by the Spaniards, the French, the Austrians and the Dutch. It's only in the last few decades that they feel they've broken free of the Walloons. Oh, that's not good. Wow, yeah. Peter is the acceptable political face of the push for independence. But sometimes the front can slip. So you don't have any friends who are French speakers? Not a lot, no, but uh, I, I mentioned, uh, I, I, I began to over in, uh, in the beginning of our interview, where I said that we don't know anything from the French media, they don't know anything from here. We live as two different countries. In the geest, we are actually all two different countries. Let's go quickly, because we are on the antenne. Bonsoir à tous. L'heure est grave. Excusez-nous pour cette interruption. Événement exceptionnel. Belgians like practical jokes, and this one was jaw-dropping. La Flandre va proclamer unilatéralement son indépendance. A fake French-language news bulletin claiming their northern cousins in Flanders were putting up border fences and unilaterally declaring independence. Les frontières 
It had reporters flying over the new dividing line, and the response was angry and electric. Mais le public, dans un premier temps, a eu peur. Le public a réagi émotionnellement. Euh, parce que euh, donc ils voyaient devant leurs yeux ce que dans leur inconscient ils ont peur que ça se réalise. It had people thinking they'd have to use passports to cross their own nation. And it also claimed a new Flemish parliament had secretly been built underground. Par contre, ce qui est certain, c'est qu'au niveau francophone, les gens sont plus conscients du danger que ce pays, non pas nécessairement éclate, mais devienne une coquille vide. The people who made the fake news bulletin work here at the French language broadcaster. It was a big surprise to their colleagues who broadcast in Flemish. They work here, just on the other side of this door. This whole building is cut in half. There are doors and corridors like this throughout. You have this rather bizarre situation. On this side of the line, you're speaking Flemish. Here, you're speaking French. Flemish, French. Why? Because the Belgians share so few cultural institutions that straddle that linguistic divide. But the people who want to keep this country together say this is proof of something that can and does work. Belgium just doesn't have the institutions that most nations do. There's no national newspaper, no national political parties. There aren't even national charities, universities, and there's no national census. It's in the border area between Flanders and Wallonia that you can find some of the greatest concerns about the possibility of Belgium splitting apart. Take the case of the town of Hoya. It has a significant French-speaking community in a wedge of Flemish territory. All the French-speaking people who have problems, they phone me, oh, that's it's true. Right. For 15 years, Marie-Claire Guillard has been a local politician here. Because I don't know... She's unusual because she's nominally Flemish, but she speaks French, not Dutch, in her home. Oh, this is the border? Yes. Under the bridge? And on the other side is... is so we're on the Flemish, Flemish side. side? Other side is French? Yes. She points out a restaurant forced out of business because they were French. School of the state. A school that refuses to accept French-speaking children. A, 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 and a tennis club that demands all its coaches speak only Flemish. What she fears are local laws that stop French speakers from buying houses. If first, before you come, you say, yes, if you don't know Flemish, you, you won't come here. I found it's a little racist. So you think it is driven by racism? Some people, not all of them, and uh, perhaps it's 5% who are raci racist and the rest is following because they don't dare say the country, and that's not good. Miss Belgium 2008 is Alize Pulicek. Sometimes a celebrity scandal can tell you a lot. Late last year, the newly crowned Miss Belgium was pounced on by the media after she failed a simple test. She couldn't answer a question in Dutch. Wie denk je over tien jaar te zijn? Of wie hoop je te zijn? Ik heb begrepen dan the boos from the audience have given this beauty queen a hard-edged lesson in Belgian public relations. There were a lot of Miss Belgium. Now she squeezes in as many references to matters Dutch as she can. So and to learn Dutch and to do a lot of things in the Dutch side of the country and with Dutch people and the party with Dutch people and I have to do my best to try to speak Dutch and Miss Belgium has been been put in the unusual place of somehow feeling responsible for some sort of elusive national reconciliation. But I want to, to show that we can do things together. 
and we can yeah we can live together and then the, there is no problem with this we, we are different okay we have different cultures with the different mentalities but we can live together and do things together In the heart of the capital, Brussels, which is multicultural and international, you find what many consider to be political poison. What is it, pumpkin, pumpkin soup or carrots? The Vlaams Belang Flemish nationalists may be on the far right, but a whopping 20% of the nation last year voted for views like this, expressed by party chairman Bruno Valcaniers. Belgium is indeed, in my opinion, it's an occupier, because basically it was created to dominate, um, to let the French culture dominate the Dutch culture. So in my opinion, it's an occupier. Deemed racist by the courts and excluded from the federal negotiations, their stance is electoral honey. A tough line on immigrants and complete disdain for Belgium. There is no common vision anymore. There's no common values, no common virtues anymore in Belgium. Does that mean there's now no longer any meaning in being Belgian? Um, for us there never was. And, and, and for more and more people today, uh, there isn't indeed. That is correct. Such thinking is the antithesis of the spirit embodied in the European Union. But it's the EU that has made the prospect of independence more viable, with a common currency and a bank, amongst other things. Against that, it's Brussels, the internationalised, officially bilingual city, that makes splitting the country that much more difficult. La Belgique est un peu un laboratoire de ce que va être l'Europe demain. Est-ce que l'Europe va être une Europe vraiment politique Est-ce qu'elle va demeurer une, simplement une zone de libre-échange économique euh, Est-ce qu'elle va être capable d'avoir un, un poids politique Quelle Europe L'Europe des régions, l'Europe des nations, l'Europe fédérale Je pense que l'Europe sera un peu ce que la Belgique va devenir demain. The atomium, a 100 meter high version of an iron atom, was built in the 1950s when unity never seemed in doubt. In the end, there will be political compromise here, with even more power taken away from the federal government and given to the regions. No one knows if that will split the atom of national unity.